Hi, thanks for taking a look at this edition of LSE at your desk. My name's Tom Merriman. I'm going to be spending the next 15 minutes talking to you about cloud computing. Cloud computing seems to be the term on everyone's lips at the moment. It certainly seems to be in a lot of presentations. In fact, if you've seen some of those presentations, you'll be expecting to see this graphic fairly shortly. But this isn't your average cloud computing presentation. I'm going to talk to you about what cloud computing is in detail, but I'm going to focus on the importance of the make or buy decision that lies behind cloud computing. I'm going to tell you how it can spur innovation, but I'm also going to explain some practical advice on how to manage it. Cloud computing represents a dramatic break with the computing past. It's changing the way we do things from storing photographs to ordering taxis and it's disrupting industries, including my own. I spent eight years as a business manager at Bloomberg. I managed a business that provided software to bond and derivative traders. And I came up against the challenges and the benefits of cloud service delivery mechanisms like software as a service on a daily basis. In fact, it's the way cloud computing is changing this industry that is among my current research interests and LSE is a great place to be pursuing that research. It has a world-class information systems department populated with world-leading experts who publish research in some of the top journals. In particular, the LSE outsourcing unit has just published a book on cloud computing. Now, if they've just published a book on it, it suggests that it's a little bit more important than just a new way of storing your photographs. At the core of cloud computing are two important principles. The first is that cloud computing changes computing from a service which you buy to one in which you can rent over the internet. And that means that it changes the cost of computing from a capital expense into an operating expense, much like renting a car. Cloud computing itself is dominated by three huge companies, Google, Microsoft and Amazon. These companies build massive data centers with thousands and thousands of servers. And this allows them to pool those resources together to provide utility computing. Cloud computing is available over the internet. It works with a pay-as-you-go model, so you only pay for what you use. And it's an on-demand service, so you don't require a lot of in-depth setup and ordering to begin with. And finally, it provides rapid elasticity. So if you need an extra 20 computers or another terabyte of storage, you can get it very quickly. But behind cloud computing lies a more fundamental decision, and that's the make or buy decision. The make or buy decision can be understood through two theories, the first of which is transaction cost theory. Transaction cost theory was developed here at LSE by Ronald Coase. He went on to win a Nobel Prize for his work and was extended by Oliver Williamson over at UC Berkeley, and he also won a Nobel Prize for his work. Transaction cost theory helps to explain how firms combat the uncertainty and complexity they encounter in the economy through the use of hierarchies, that is, firms with managers and bosses, or the price mechanism, that is, the market. But both of these incur transaction costs. So, for example, consider you're getting a cleaner for your home. The problem is you have a very delicate rug or carpet that needs some special cleaning. So you know that finding a cleaner out in the market is going to be very difficult because you need to find one with the requisite skills. And when you do find one, it might be difficult to teach them exactly how you want that rug cleaned. Further, you're worried that once you do teach them how to do it, they might take advantage of you because they know how difficult it will be for you to find a replacement. So instead, you consider using your teenage son or daughter to do the work. The problem is they might well know how to do the cleaning because they've seen you do it before, but they might be difficult to manage and certainly difficult to track down. All of those challenges can be viewed as transaction costs. But crucially, IT is thought to reduce transaction costs by improving coordination. So if you've used any of the uh, smartphone apps that help you book cleaners for your home like Handy or Homejoy, you'll know how much easier it is to book a cleaner than the old way of getting recommendations through friends and family. 
Tom Malone did some important work in 1987 on transaction costs. He explained that not only does IT help reduce transaction costs by improving coordination, but actually it will cause firms to favour the market over the hierarchy. So let's have a look at an example. Here's a firm which needs to do some marketing. Perhaps it needs to send a specific email to a particular set of customers who have maybe bought their product at a specific place. To do that, they're going to need some computing resource. Now, they could build it in-house, or they could go to the market and use a cloud service provider to provide that computing power. Tom Malone's work suggests that they'll prefer the cloud service provider, that is, they'll prefer the market because of the way IT improves coordination not just amongst workers in one firm, but amongst workers across firms. The other way of looking at the make or buy decision is by firms focusing on what they're good at. That's known as the resource or capabilities view. There are lots of contributors to this particular theory and I've just named a couple up here. But at its heart, what it means is that firms focus on what they're good at to the expense of everything else. They identify the skills and capabilities that drive their competitive advantage, that bring them additional profits, and they focus on these and then get rid of or outsource everything else. So Netflix, for example, when it was changing its business model from one where it mailed out DVDs to customers to one in which it provided uh, internet on demand, uh, sorry, video on demand over the internet, could have used its own data center. If it had done so, the sophistication of those data centers and the size could have meant that Netflix became a cloud service provider like Amazon or Google all on its own. Instead, Netflix decided that it should focus on what it's good at, which in this case was negotiating film and TV rights and building tools to help users find their favorite TV show or film. So what they did was to outsource their computing requirements to Amazon and Amazon's expertise in cloud services allowed them to provide the internet on the video on demand service over the internet in lots of countries and it's the service we see today. But what's really powerful about cloud computing is how it combines these two theories. And that's what Eric Brynjolfsson writes about in some of his work. It's this combination that spurs innovation. Firms can not only get hold of computer resources cheaply through cloud computing, but they can get hold of some of the world's best computing resources through cloud computing. And this allows them to do what they do even better. In the case of Instagram, Instagram came up with a very cool way of applying filters to photographs and then allowing you to share it with your friends and other users. But to do that, they needed some really quite sophisticated computing technology. It wasn't something they were to provide themselves, but what they could do is work with Amazon to leverage Amazon's expertise in computing to provide the Instagram service that we know today. And that's what contributed to Instagram's success. And it also contributed to the $1 billion valuation that Instagram had in 2013 at the time of purchase, despite having only 13 employees. So how can we use what we've learned here about cloud computing in our own business? Well, John Seeley Brown, who's a very important contributor to the technology world, characterizes cloud computing as a type of low-cost outsourcing. That's useful for us because we know quite a bit about outsourcing already. Outsourcing is the process of getting a vendor to perform one or more activities in the firm's value chain. And we see it quite regularly. It could be a bank taking advantage of cheaper costs in another country to outsource its call center. But more recently, what companies are using it for is to outsource a function to another company who can perform it even better than they can. And that's really the key with cloud computing. It's not just that it's cheaper computing, but it's also better. Of course, Outsourcing itself is a very complicated subject and there have been a lot of high profile failures. Cullen and her co-authors here suggest that outsourcing should be viewed in a life cycle, through a life cycle model. And that begins with investigating and targeting what should be outsourced and then designing a suitable strategy to do so. But cloud computing, just like outsourcing, 
is not a way to remove your IT problems. It is not a panacea. Wilcox suggests that actually what you should do is to retain a certain number of IT capabilities and competences in order to effectively manage cloud computing. In particular, he identifies business systems thinking, that is the ability to identify processes which drive the firm's strategy and the ability to support those processes with technology. Finally, he identifies tech leadership as a way of ensuring that the right technology is being used to drive a firm strategy. So what have we learned here? Well, cloud computing is a way of renting utility computing over the internet. It lowers transaction costs and it allows firms to focus on their core competences. It's a type of low cost outsourcing and can be managed as such, but firms need to retain a certain number of IT capabilities and competences in order to really make it work. But what's most important about cloud computing is the way it combines those two factors of lower transaction costs with the ability to leverage someone else's core competence. And that's what makes it spur innovation. And it's that that means cloud computing is such an important development. Thanks very much for watching.